Uh, hey. You kind of caught me at a bad time. I was just about to watch Apocalypse Now Redux. Oh, right, the gun showcase episode. Uh, shoot. Um, well, I'll get to recording that after I finish watching this, right? Oh, come on, what do I have to do it now? Oh, damn. Okay, let me get my crap together and I'll crank out this episode, okay? Yeah, um... <clears throat> Can you just roll the intro while um, I get everything ready together and all that? No! 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 Sorry! Sorry! Um, as much as the editor would like to play that song in its entirety, we don't want to anger the UMG gods and get into a copyright scuffle. All right, let's try that again once more. Roll the intro. Picture this, you're POW at a Viet Cong camp and you're getting the living hell beaten out of you by two Vietnamese soldiers. One of them starts to yell in broken English, WHERE ARE YOUR COMRADES? But you refuse to tell them. All that does is make them beat you harder. <laughs> then, when all seems lost, you hear the sound of a chopper up above and the gunfire erupts. The two soldiers that were torturing you jolt up and stare out the window with expressions of terror, and then BANG BANG! In a blink of an eye, both fall over dead. An American soldier busts into the door and quickly unties you. You get to live another day. Now let me ask you, that American soldier, what gun is he carrying? Well of course it's not even a question, he's carrying an M16. And today, we are going to take a look into one of the most recognizable and famous rifles of the Cold War, and arguably of all time. Once called a flimsy metal toy by soldiers, this weapon had a hell of a time getting into the American soldiers' hands. So without further delay, let's dive deep into its bumpy history. is one of the most fascinating and interesting periods of recent history. If you somehow skipped every single history class in school, the Cold War was a period of high political and ideological tension between the USA and the USSR, where both tried to prove which political worldview was the best. And how did they do that, you ask? By racing to get the newest, hottest, and best technology quicker than the other. Like a child safety seat or the first computer mouse, which looked like this. <laughs> I mean, sure, there were much more impressive inventions like rockets and the lunar rover, but, um... I mean, buffalo wings were also invented around this time, so... Military technology was also constantly changing. While there were no direct military engagements between the US and the Soviets, there were still a lot of other proxy wars between them going on around the time. Like the Korean War, which was the first major war since World War II. During the Korean War, the US was looking for a weapon that could function as a replacement to the other various infantry weapons in use. They then began to test several rifles, including Springfield Armory's T-44E4, which was essentially an updated M1 Garand chamber from the new standard round, and Normalite's AR-10 design, which was hastily submitted. The AR-10 was favored among testers, however the military decided to pick the T-44, which is now known as the M14 currently. It was during the Vietnam War when the M14 finally went up against the Soviet's newest rifle, the AK-47. And let's just say things got messy. Battlefield reports showed that the M14 was uncontrollable at full auto and soldiers were unable to carry enough ammunition to maintain superiority over the AK. Because of this, the US were forced to reconsider the adoption of the M14. Enter Armalite, again, who presented a scaled down version of the AR-10 known as the AR-15. The US considered it, but then the US turned around again and said, Nah, just make sure all the rifles have the same ammunition type, but let's go all into the M14! 
However, advocates of the AR-15 turned towards the US Air Force, and after some testing, it became the standard issue rifle for the Air Force. The USAF ordered 8,500 rifles and 85 million rounds for those rifles. Then, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, also known as DARPA, acquired 1,000 of those Air Force AR-15s and then tested them with the South Vietnamese, who reported only two malfunctions. With all of this positive information towards the AR-15, Army Secretary Cyrus Vance decided to launch an investigation into why the AR-15 wasn't chosen originally. And get this, Army Material Command had rigged the previous tests, selecting certain criteria that would favor the M14. Wow. Eventually, the AR-15 was finally selected for use in the military, but not before going through some modifications and a name change. Yes, that's right. Its new name was the M16. Actually, the Air Force's AR-15s were given that name. The Army, however, insisted on the addition of a debatably unnecessary forward assist. Don't care. Don't. And so, the name became the XM-16E1. In 1963, 85,000 XM-16s were ordered for the Army, and the Air Force was granted another 19,000 M-16s. In March 1964, the XM-16 started being issued to troops without cleaning instructions. <laughs> I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, but you guys are fucked! The rifles became infamous for jamming, and in fact, one Marine Corps rifleman said, quote, We left with 72 men in our platoon and came back with 19. Believe it or not, you know what killed most of us? Our own rifle. Practically every one of our dead was found with his M16 torn down next to him, where he'd been trying to fix it. This led to a new version of the XM16E1 with much needed modifications that was given the name the M16A1. And finally, in 1968, it achieved a level of acceptance by the soldiers using it in Vietnam. And because of the success of the M16A1, several variants were made afterwards, including the M16A2, which was requested by the US Marine Corps after combat experience. The M16 was the little assault rifle that could. While going through an extremely rough start, it eventually gained the trust of the American soldiers and the trust of many other soldiers across the world. The design is still being honored today with rifles like the M4 Carbine. And with that said, let's get to the in-game stuff. The M16A1 was added in the minor update on the 6th of July 2017, along with the M14, M1911, M1917, and the... the Golden Gun. Am I reading this right? Anyway, the M16 borrowed its model from one of Rawls' other games, Unit 1968, which takes place in the jungles of Nam. However, a year later on the 27th of November 2018, in an update known as the Mega Update, it was removed for some reason. It was then re-added into Arsenal in the 2.3 update that came out in the 29th of January 2019, with a new weapon model that resembled the XM16E1. And finally, on the 6th of July 2021, its firing sounds were changed. The M16A2 and its M203 GL grenade launcher were added in the Mega Update on the 27th of November 2018. Its all-black model and its underbarrel M203 was obviously inspired by the M16A1 that Tony Montana, the protagonist of the hate 80s film Scarface, used at the end of the film. That's also where this famous little line came from. Say hello to my little friend! <laughs> Anyways, on the 15th of December 2018, the M203's projectile hit detection was improved, and the ability to switch between the M16A2 and M203 when reloading was added. After the new year rolled around, the M203's projectile, that was borrowed from the Team Color Typical Colors 2 grenade launcher, was changed to a custom, more fitting one. Then on the 1st of November that same year, the M203's damage was nerfed. Flash forward to the 28th of March 2020, and the ability to rocket jump with the M203 was finally added. Then on the 6th of July 2021, the M16A2's magazine size was increased from 20 to 60 to 30 to 90. And finally, on the 31st of October 2021, the M16A2 and the M203 got new firing sounds. The M203's previous firing sounds were taken from Super Interactive's Killing Floor 2. Radio, how about we move on to the statistics now? Sounds good? Good. The M16A1 
one is an all-around good rifle. It has very low and easy to control spread, an amazing rate of fire, okay damage in close quarters, and an okay reload. However, because of its high fire rate and low ammo capacity, it eats through ammo really fast. And it has low body damage, which will often lead to your target slipping away with low health. The strategy when using this gun is to try and engage at close to medium ranges and to not let your opponent leave your sightline at all times. Now the archived M16A1 was burst, much like the M16A2 currently in game, and it has a 30 round magazine, unlike the 20 it has in game today. Basically the only strategy with this is just to spam it like there was no tomorrow once you see an enemy, because basically all the other stats were the same as the one in game today. Now the M16A2 is arguably better than the M16A1, it has fast fire rate when bursting, high damage, an okay reload time, and a moderate magazine size. Well I mean it's better than M16A1 that's for sure. You can also one shot kill someone at CQC. The only real inconvenience is a slow movement speed, but come on, it has a freaking grenade launcher at the bottom. And speaking of that grenade launcher, let's talk about that. It's a one hit kill at all ranges. It has high area of effect, allowing for multiple kills at once, a faster projectile speed compared to other explosive weapons, a fast reload, and the ability to rocket jump. However, its arching projectile makes it harder to hit enemies from long ranges. Users can instantly kill themselves if not careful, and there's only one grenade in the tube and then the reserve. Thank you so much for watching! Insert generic speech about liking, subscribing, commenting, and sharing here. My name is Remington VA, and you've been watching Gun Showcase. Catch you later!